We want to determine the chromatic polynomial and the chromatic number for the graph. Start by separating the graph in these two points. You're allowed to do that if you then multiply the two parts and divide them by this where the 2 represents the number of nodes you divide the graph in. This bit is equal to lambda times lambda minus 1. In this left graph we can see that all nodes are connected to each other. That makes it a fully connected graph with 4 nodes, which then gives us p out of k4 and lambda that is equal to this because of that 4. Now, let's continue with this unfinished business. We'll take this graph and remove the connection between these two nodes. You are allowed to do that if you then subtract the same graph but with those same nodes conjoined instead. This is going to give you a tree with 4 nodes that can be represented as lambda times lambda minus 1 to the power of the number of nodes minus 1. And here we have a fully connected graph with 3 nodes giving us p out of k3 and lambda that is equal to this. To get the chromatic polynomial we'll put together the information we've gathered so far. We'll take the first graph times the second graph that is equal to this subtraction. And then we divide it all with this. We'll neaten up the expression by breaking out lambda times lambda minus 1 so that we'll get rid of the division. And voila! Here's our chromatic polynomial. And now we'll run some tests to determine the lowest positive lambda such that the chromatic polynomial is greater than or equal to 1. 1, 2 and 3 are no good. But 4, on the other hand, is greater than 1 and therefore 4 is our chromatic number.